Hello everyone, happy afternoon or very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, am I audible and visible? I'm not able to see the audio visual guys uh, could you please give a quick nod whether the audio visual is good Okay, that's great. So, welcome to this today's YouTube live session, the episode 42 in NF100. That is the top 100 topics for NEET PG and also for FMG. And today we are going to discuss the pupil abnormalities. There's an abnormality in the spelling here. So, it is about pupil abnormalities that we are going to talk about. A lot of, uh, you know, confusing topic. It is a pupil abnormalities. I'll try and simplify it from my end for you quickly, you know, uh, just focusing on what you should remember and how you should remember right so we are going to talk about the ad's pupil the argyll robertson pupil the honors right the anisocoria and everything and just as i said focusing on the most important points what i want you to do after this is uh, just quickly revise this topic from whatever notes you are referring to and then solve the MCQs also so that you get a confidence in this topic and you know that how the MCQs are asked. So immediately after the session is over, go back to your notes, just read this topic quickly and then solve the MCQs and be done with that. Okay, so when is the next class? We are meeting next guys like every day of 5 p.m. live at 5, the fast 5 KBMD. Interesting MCQs with tricky options basically to prime you for the type of questions that can come in the exam and how to develop the MCQ solving skills, right? So 5 p.m. it's a special class. That means it's a free live class and you can use the code Dr. Nikita Live for uh, enrolling for the same. You'll get the link on the Telegram group for the 5 p.m. Uh, class. All right. And today is the last day for the Republic Day special offer, which is the six months free extension. If you take minimum one year subscription, right, it's uh, valid. Remember on minimum one year subscription and it's valid only till today. And if you use the code Dr. Nikita, you'll get additional 10% off as well. And today we kick started with the ultra fast revision batch for the plus and the iconic subscribers, a 25 days batch targeting at revising all the 19 subjects. In this batch, we have radiology on 7, 8 and 9th of February from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Right. So please mark the dates. The radiology rapid revision, it is six hours basically on 7, 8, 9 of February. OK, uh, can I tell the reason along with each pupil why it happens? I'll try and do, you know, whatever I know, I'll uh, try and do my best to simplify it for you. All right. The FMD students uh, also remember that we have started with the, the comprehensive batch. Uh, it's a five month course, so you can make the best of it. And you have various subscriptions that are available. Iconic is an academy with prep ladder, so you can take that as well. Okay. So let's start with the today's topic here. Uh, that is uh, basically about the pupil. So when we need to understand about pupil, we should have the basic knowledge of the pupil response as well, right? The light reflects basically the pupil reflects. Now, what is pupil? Pupil is basically the defect in the iris that allows the light to reach to the retina. And then we get the light reflex, the response to light. What is the pupillary response to light in the pupil reflex? When bright light, we shine a bright light, we know that the pupil constricts, right? So, some quick tips here in this topic. That is your uh, pupil reflex, may, pupil may constriction versus dilatation. Okay, 
remember that the pupillary constriction is it parasympathetic pathway or is it sympathetic pathway is it parasympathetic or is it sympathetic which system is responsible for the pupillary uh, pupillary constriction yes absolutely right so remember that the pupil constriction okay the pupil constriction is done by the parasympathetic system right you have the parasympathetic system you can remember this as that uh, basically your parasympathetic is parasympathetic is acting on the pupil sphincter we know that when the sphincter pupil it constricts uh, contracts it leads to the pupillary constriction that is basically called as meiosis okay that is your meiosis or meiosis whatever you want to call it so remember it is parasympathetic and what nerve is it for the pupillary constriction is it the short ciliary nerve or is it the long ciliary nerve mm -hmm. what is responsible for the pupillary constriction is it the short ciliary or is it the long ciliary so remember again pupil sphincter is your short ciliary nerve okay it is your short ciliary nerve not the long ciliary remember the sphincter is the short ciliary nerve it is parasympathetic basically which nerve is responsible for pupillary constriction which are the parasympathetic cranial nerves anatomy 3 7 9 10 right so out of that the third nerve basically is responsible for the pupillary constriction okay it is the third nerve uh, please try uh, in your settings uh, nuzat increasing the video quality to 360 at least that will make the video quality better okay so remember it's the third nerve for pupillary constriction what muscles are responsible for the constriction of the pupil is it the circular muscles or is it the radial muscles so in the pupil basically we have the circular muscles and we have the radial muscles as well right we have the circular and the radial which is uh, responsible for the pupillary constriction again remember c for c constriction ke liye it is the circular muscles contracting circular contracting it is constriction radial contracting the pupil gets dilated okay so these are all the points that we learned for pupil constriction same thing the opposite would apply for the pupil dilatation remember it is the sympathetic system right what ciliary nerve it is the long ciliary nerve right it's a long ciliary nerve what muscle contraction the radial muscle contraction leads to the pupillary dilatation right it leads to the pupillary dilatation so if i tell you that there's a problem with the sympathetic pathway what would be the abnormality that we would see in the uh, pupil if the sympathetic pathway is affected what would happen to the pupil the pupil will constrict or the pupil will dilate midriatic or myotic right sympathetic that means the dilatation is not happening so we will get a myotic pupil right because the dilatation is not happening and therefore in which condition we see the meiosis sympathetic affected that is basically your horners right so in horners we get myotic right a very very important question frequently asked on horners so horners is basically a problem in sympathetic right so sympathetic is not by the cranial nerve the sympathetic supply long ciliary nerve it's basically along around the internal carotid artery you have the sympathetic plexus that provides the supply okay around the internal uh, carotid artery theek hai so similarly if you have third nerve palsy how would be the pupil in third nerve palsy third nerve parasympathetic pupil sphincter constriction not happening therefore there would be dilated pupil right so in third nerve palsy the pupil will be dilated in horners the pupil will be constricted right the basic the concept that we are learning here okay now the next one we were talking about the light reflex or the pupil reflex right what is the light reflex when we shine a torch or light in one eye what is the afferent nerve what is the light carried by that is the optic nerve right that is the second nerve and what is the efferent what is the response to light the constriction of the pupil that is parasympathetic that is the third nerve that is your 
oculo motor nerve but is it only that one pupil constricts in which you are shining the light or both the pupils constrict it is both the pupils normally that should constrict right because the imprint it is going to both the eyes so both pupils should constrict so let's say if this is the right eye and this is the left eye and we are shining light in the right eye right this is the pupil in response to that both the pupils will constrict okay so the constriction of the right eye pupil that is called as your direct light reflex in which you are shining the pupil is constricting that is direct the other one the opposite one also constricting that is your consensual light reflex right so the opposite one that is your consensual light reflex okay so these are the basics that we should know so just a quick review here pupil constricts in response to bright light that is your circular muscles leading to constriction pupil dilates in the dim light remember in the dim light the pupil dilates right because you want more light to go inside so the radial muscles lead to the dilatation and in the pupillary reflex you have the afferent by the optic nerve and the efferent by the oculomotor nerve both the sides oculomotor nerve right you can see that both the sides will lead to the pupillary constriction clear with everyone the basic concepts here in pupil the nerve supply and the light reflex you can remember this easily that when you see a lion right the fight flight system gets activated that is your sympathetic system and how do the eyes become if you see a lion suddenly the eyes will become big that is dilatation so remember dilatation is sympathetic parasympathetic is pupil sphincter that is constriction okay now let's see at this image tell me what do you think is abnormal here in this patient This is the fifty-year-old patient who has an isochoria. What do you mean by an isochoria? Choria basically means core, मतलब pupil. ठीक है? Iso मतलब same. An iso means not same. That means the pupil is of different size. Okay, so an isochoria means different size pupil. Okay, right. So do we see here the pupil are of two different size? This is a uh, one pupil, the right, and this is the left. The right pupil is dilated. So Vaishnavi says this is Argel Robertson. How many of you agree to that? How many of you agree to that? Basically. Now let me tell you how you should approach if you get image based questions like this how you should approach in this images now whenever you have a case of anisochoria you should first see whether the anisochoria is more in dark or in the bright light when is the size difference more apparent that is the first thing that you should be seeing now look at this patient in dim light and in bright light where do you see that the size difference in the pupil is more prominent where do you see that the size difference in the pupil is more prominent is it in the dim light or is it in the bright light in this patient it is in the bright light okay so in the bright light the size difference is becoming more apparent what happens in the bright light normally what is the response in the bright light pupil constriction or pupil dilatation it is constriction right so basically if in the bright light the size difference is more that means the affected pupil is not constricting that is why the size difference is appearing more the normal pupil is constricting the affected pupil is not constricting so the size difference is more so therefore the abnormal pupil is the dilated wala pupil okay the abnormal pupil is the dilated pupil which is not constricting opposite will happen in the dark okay if the size difference is more in the dark what happens normally in dark in the dim light the pupil should dilate the abnormal pupil is not dilating that means the abnormal pupil is the constricted pupil okay the constricted pupil is the abnormal pupil so this is one concept that i want you to remember 
whenever there is an isochoria look at whether it's more in bright light or it's more in dim light if it is in the bright light then it is the dilated pupil which is abnormal if it is more in dark it is the constricted pupil which is abnormal so now look at this patient the size difference in the pupil is more prominent in the bright light so tell me which pupil is abnormal is it the right pupil or is it the left pupil which one is abnormal the right or the left See, when you have an isochoria it could be the smaller pupil which is abnormal or it could be the larger pupil which is abnormal so to determine that you need to see where it is more absolutely right it is the right eye pupil which is not constricting and that is why the right pupil is abnormal. So in this patient, it is the right pupil which is abnormal. The dilated pupil is abnormal here because it's more prominent in the bright light, right? So what do you see in response to the near target? That is basically your accommodation, the convergence, the meiosis, the near target. What do you think? So in the near target, you can see this dilated pupil has become constricted and the pupil have become almost of the same size. That means the near target, that is the accommodation reflex is present. The light reflex is absent. It's not showing the light reflex. It's not constricting, but the accommodation reflex is present. And the abnormal pupil is the dilated pupil. So this is your AD's pupil. Okay, remember that. This is the AD's pupil. Now, you can remember this AD's pupil as basically your the AD's pupil is basically the one the abnormal pupil is the dilated pupil okay the abnormal pupil is the dilated pupil okay so remember that AD's is your dilated and it is generally asymmetrical like you saw in this patient it is unilateral now someone i think vaishnavi mentioned argyll robertson pupil how do you differentiate from argyll robertson pupil remember that the argyll robertson pupil it is generally your bilateral pupils which are affected and the bilateral pupils are small they are not dilated they are small irregular pupil the very common cause is your neurocephalus can be seen in diabetes and the multiple sclerosis also so remember this difference ADs is unilateral argyll robertson is bilateral ADs is dilated pupil Argyll Robertson is small pupil. In both of them, if you see, what did we see in the patient of uh, ADs? What did we see in the patient of ADs? The light reflex was absent, but the near reflex, the accommodation reflex was present. Same thing we see in Argyll Robertson pupil as well right argyll robertson pupil the mnemonic is arp that is accommodation reflex present read it ulta pra that is the pupil reflex is absent right this is similar to your ad's pupil but the difference is ad's is dilated pupil unilateral Argyll Robertson is bilateral constricted pupil. Is this clear with everyone? Right. What is the site? The lesion site in ADs. It is basically your ciliary ganglion which is getting affected. Okay. In ADs, it is the ciliary ganglion which is affected. Okay. So uh, now can you tell me another cause? ADs ek ho gaya, where you have unilateral dilated pupil. Can you tell me another cause of unilateral dilated pupil? Right, so one we saw the cause of unilateral dilated pupil. One is your ADs. What is the other cause of the dilated pupil? Very good. It is your third nerve palsy. We know that third nerve palsy can also lead to dilated pupil because parasympathetic is gone. So how will you differentiate from ADs? Think logically. What are the other features that you will have in third nerve palsy? Third 
the nerve supplies your extraocular muscles also so there would be associated ptosis the extraocular muscles mobility would be affected how would be the eyeball it would be down and out right it would be down and out plus there will be associated ptosis right so it would be down and out and there would be dilated pupil another cause where you can get abnormally dilated pupil maybe pharmacologic if we have put a eye drop which is leading to the dilatation right jab hum fundus ka examination kar rahe the we put the eye drop so pharmacologic midriasis is another cause of your dilated pupil pharmacologic midriasis okay so in that case my next question to you is how do you differentiate whether it is ad's ka dilated pupil versus it is pharmacologic midriasis how will you differentiate whether it is ad's dilated or it is pharmacologic midriasis third nerve ko you will identify by ptosis and the down and out but both of these will look similar very good dr anisha absolutely right one point is accommodation reflex it is present in ad's in pharmacologic midriasis it is absent 0.125% phenylephrine phenylephrine is your sympathetic right it's a dilated pupil do you want to dilate it more or you want to constrict you want to dilate or you want to constrict dilated pupil you want to constrict so you will give not phenylephrine you will give pilocarpin right you will give pilocarpin right so they are differentiated by pilocarpin which is cholinergic parasympathetic right you want to see for constriction so in ad's pupil there is denervation hypersensitivity which is present so even with dilute pilocarpin you would see that the constriction of the pupil is present dilute means you use 0.1 in pharmacologic be it dilute or be it strong there is no constriction present even with 1% pilocarpin right there would be no constriction present even with 1% pilocarpin right in pharmacologic the receptors are blocked basically so the pilocarpin will not be able to act so remember pharmacologic wala is your persistent midriasis it does not respond to pilocarpin right it will not constrict these are the two important points that you need to remember right and so in this patient what will you do in this ad stonic uh, pupil what will you do in this ad stonic pupil there is no treatment basically over the period of time what happens this abnormally dilated pupil it becomes small in size the anisocoria decreases it might even become smaller than the normal pupil right so over a period of time it is uh, over a period of time it becomes normal here the tonic is for your the radial muscle which is tonically contracted leading to dilatation okay Okay, so remember this: the point that we learned when anisocoria. What is anisocoria? The different pupil sizes. When it increases in the bright light, the larger pupil is abnormal. Okay, the larger pupil is abnormal. ठीक है? So याद रखना कि जब bright light में it is increasing, the बड़ा वाला pupil, that is the larger pupil. is abnormal okay the larger pupil is abnormal okay so bright light may fit increases the dilated pupil the bada wala pupil is abnormal okay okay now uh, look at this question and let's see your understanding of this topic this patient does not have pharmacological midriasis why what is the right answer to this question Why does this patient does not have pharmacological midriasis? <clears throat> Very good, Manisha got it right the first. So we said 
that this is not pharmacological midriasis, this is ADs pupil because the accommodation reflex is present. In pharmacologic, the accommodation reflex is absent. So, in response to the near target, the right pupil, the dilated pupil is constricting. That is why this is your ADs. This is not your pharmacologic. In pharmacologic, light reflex, accommodation reflex, both are absent. Okay, both are absent. So, uh, remember that if the patient had pharmacological midriasis, the pupil remains dilated in response to both light and the near target. So, pharmacologic midriasis is basically your persistent midriasis. It does not respond to anything. Kisi ki nahi sunega aapka pharmacological midriasis. Okay. Next one. Look at this image and tell me what do you think is the pathology? Is it left horn nose? Is it right ADs? Is it Argel Robinson pupil or is it the right horn nerve palsy? So, based on whatever we have discussed so far, you can answer this question. Pathology shown is it left horn nose? Is it right ADs? Is it Argel Robinson or is it right horn nerve palsy? Now see, basically what are you seeing in this patient? Yes, there is a nisocoria. The right pupil is dilated. The left pupil is constricted, right? So either it is the right dilated pupil which is uh, abnormal or it is the left constricted pupil which is abnormal. If it is left horners, we should see the left meiosis, the left constriction. But this is not left horners. Can someone tell me why this is not left horners? The pupil is constricted. We can say that the right is normal but the left is constricted. But what are the components of Horner's syndrome? You get ptosis also. So along with meiosis, there is ptosis, there is enophthalmos, the eye goes inside. Plus, if it is congenital horners, it has heterochromia iridis, right? In the congenital one, you have heterochromia iridis. Is there ptosis in this patient? No. So, that is why this is not horners. Uh, why this is not Argel Robertson? Because they are bilateral small pupil. Here one pupil is large, one is small. So this is not Argel Robertson. Why this is right? Why this is not right third nerve palsy? Again, there is no right ptosis. The eyeball is not down and out, right? Right third nerve palsy, the pupil will be dilated, but there will be ptosis, the eyeball will be down and out. So this is also out. That is why the answer here is. This is the right ADs pupil. ADs, the abnormal pupil, is the dilated pupil, right? Light reflex absent, accommodation reflex present. Clear with everyone, right? So, this is how you would need to answer the question. Now, let's go to the next pupil types, basically. What do you see in pontine hemorrhage? Remember, pontine Pont is basically your point, pinpoint pupils. So, pinpoint pupils are seen in your pontine lesions. So remember, pontine lesions lead to your pinpoint pupils. Okay, pinpoint is pontine. Okay. And if you have a nisocoria with the affected pupil dilated, especially like let's say in a patient of trauma, patient of raised ICT. Think of Hutchison's pupil as well. Now, what is Hutchison's pupil? Basically, when there is uncle herniation, the transtentorial herniation, you have the temporal lobe, then you have the midbrain here, then you have the third nerve coming out. So, when there is uncle herniation, the medial temporal lobe, uncus is the medial temporal lobe getting herniated, the third nerve is compressed. So, in the initial stages, because of the irritation of the third nerve, that pupil gets constricted because of the third nerve irritation. But later on, when the compression is long standing, the third nerve gets paralyzed and you would see that the same side pupil, ipsilateral pupil gets dilated, right? The same side pupil gets dilated. So, remember that is Hutchison's pupil, third nerve, it is because of the uncle herniation, especially seen in a patient of trauma. 
ओके Now there's something called as Wernicke's hemianomic pupil. I am just focusing on the important points, as I said, which you should know. Wernicke's hemianomic pupil. Yes, Ades would also be there. Mukul. Just I wanted to discuss about Hutchinson's. So unilateral dilated pupil. You will think of Ades also. Hutchinson's wala pupil will not react to anything. ठीक है. Ades में again accommodation will be present. When you say hemianomic Tell me from our topic discussion of visual field defects. When does the homonymous hemianopia uh, come into the picture? The lesion where homonymous hemianopia. That means zona side ka let's say right side defect is there. It is basically the lesion after the optic chiasma okay it's a lesion after optic chiasma it is not optic nerve if it's optic nerve affected that one particular eye will become completely blind it is after optic chiasma that is optic tract so remember that hemianomic pupil is basically your lesion in the optic tract that is another question which is asked okay so hemianomic is your lesion in the optic tract ठीक है, so if you put the light in the affected side or the visual field, you will not see the response, the light reflex. That is what is hemianopic. Okay. Next one, this we discussed. What is Argel Robertson pupil? A R P accommodation reflex present. P R A pupillary reflex absent. Right. So you will have this is called as light near dissociation. What do you mean by the term light near dissociation? That means one reflex is present, the other reflex is absent. Right. That is what is light near dissociation. That is light near dissociation. Okay. And how are the pupils? You can see the pupils are small. These are bilateral generally asymmetrical. Small pupils. Remember, Argel Robertson is bilateral, small, irregular pupil. Ades is unilateral dilated pupil. Most common cause is neurosyphilis. Okay, and these pupils are difficult to dilate. So remember, Argel Robertson bilateral, small. Okay, bilateral, small. Very, very important. All right. Uh, look at this one. What do you think is this image showing? We are shining the light here. The pupils are not constricting. The light reflex is absent, but the pupils constrict on near object. The accommodation reflex is present. Okay, so pupillary reflex absent, accommodation reflex present. You will think of Ergel Robertson. You will think of Ades pupil. Anything else? The light reflex dissociation that you can think of in the brainstem syndromes. We have read about it. light reflex and light near dissociation also remember the perinod syndrome okay also remember in the brain stem syndrome perinod what was our perinod syndrome perinod was our dorsal mid brain syndrome basically leading to compression of the colliculi the superior colliculi responsible for vision getting affected and that leads to what your upward gaze palsy very important apart from that you would have upward gaze palsy it is the vertical gaze which is affected horizontal gaze is controlled in your pprf right and this is your upward gaze palsy but and there is convergence retraction nystagmus please remember these important points you know actually for your exams you need to know the key words where the examiner tries to trap you okay so upward superior gaze palsy convergence retraction nystagmus uh, along with your light near dissociation that is perinod what is a very common cause of perinod remember p for p the pineal gland tumors the lesions of the pineal gland okay the pineal gland lesions they compress on the colliculi because if you remember the brain stem mid brain pons medulla you have the colliculi here you have the corpus callosum here this is where below the corpus callosum you have the pineal gland so there's a pineal gland lesion it will compress on the colliculi okay so remember perinodes pineal gland dorsal mid brain is affected okay dorsal mid brain is affected next one so 
basically now this is a very very important flow chart which helps you understand the anisocoria ke features and what test helps you differentiate what kind of pupil is it okay so look at this one now anisocoria if you have a patient of anisocoria you need to see whether it is greater in light or it is greater in darkness okay we said that if the anisocoria is greater in dark that means it is the constricted pupil which is abnormal right because it is not getting dilated the constricted pupil is abnormal so what causes do you think of constricted pupil horner syndrome right you think of horner syndrome then in that case um, if there is no dilatation lag basically what is the test i'll come to this in horners what test do we do for horners the apraclonidin test please remember there is this apraclonidin test which is done for horners that means in horners i'll show you the image of horners after you give apraclonidin the pupil the affected pupil the horners pupil it dilates that defines your horners and if you give phenylephrine that helps you differentiate whether it is preganglionic or it is postganglionic i'll come to horners after this look at this one if the anisocoria is greater in light yani bada wala pupil is abnormal that means it is a cause of dilated pupil and in dilated pupil ad is or pharmacologic or cranial nerve third palsy that is what we think of now how do we differentiate if in the dilated pupil the slit lamp examination is abnormal then you think of iris damage leading to the dilated pupil if the slit lamp is normal then you do this pilocarpin 0.1% that is dilute right that is dilute if it is positive that means the bada wala abnormal pupil becomes small the denervation hypersensitivity it is your ad pupil if it is negative that means there is no change then you give a strong pilocarpin 1% if the 1% say this pupil constricts it is cranial nerve third palsy even if with 1% is that not does not change then it is pharmacologic midriasis so please remember this is just the flow chart showing what we learned pharmacologic midriasis is a persistent midriasis does not change even with 1% ad is pupil is your hypersensitive it is uh, reacting to pilocarpin dilute also 0.1% as well now let us see your horners ka testing that we were talking about apraclonidin testing we said that this is a test which is done for horners and what do you exactly see in a patient of horners now look at this patient this is a man with your left horners you can see there is mild ptosis and the pupil is relatively smaller as compared to right okay now when you give apraclonidin and then you see that the anisocoria is reversed the pupil have become of the same size the ptosis is also gone so basically with apraclonidin we see reversal right remember we see ra is for reversal is seen with apraclonidin in horners okay so look at this diagram how does apraclonidin basically act what is apraclonidin on what receptor does apraclonidin act remember we have seen this in our ans pharmacology clonidine dye it is your alpha 2 a gonist right it's your alpha 2 a gonist it has weak alpha 1 activity as well by acting on the alpha 2 a gonist what does it do to the noradrenaline release what does it do to the noradrenaline release the presynaptic alpha 2 is like a break to the noradrenaline release so if you stimulate this alpha 2 the noradrenaline release is decreased so the noradrenaline will be decreased but at the same time this clonidine by acting on the alpha 1 okay by acting on the alpha 1 it will lead to the dilatation of the pupil so look at this patient here the small pupil this has become dilated there is reversal which has occurred with there is reversal which has occurred with apraclonidin what does cocaine do 
वी डू द कोकेन टेस्ट वी यूज टू डू पहले कोकेन एंड एम्फेटामिन टेस्ट नाउ वी डू एप्राक्लोनिडिन टेस्ट फॉर हॉर्नर्स ओके रिमेम्बर वेन दे टॉक अबाउट रिवर्सल ऑफ कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन बाई एप्राक्लोनिडिन इट इज हॉर्नर्स दैट इज हाउ वी डायग्नोज हॉर्नर्स ओके कोकेन बेसिकली इनिबिट दिस एंजाइम सी ओ एम टी द मिथाइल ट्रांसफरीज that is responsible for the breakdown and reuptake of noradrenaline so by inhibiting this it increases the levels of adrenaline okay the noradrenaline levels are increased and that basically does not lead to the reversal the horner's pupil does not dilate look at this one okay look at this patient if i ask you what do you think is the diagnosis in this patient what do you think is the diagnosis in this patient Horners. More cool because clonidin, uh, rather than apart from decreasing the noradrenaline, it has a mild alpha one activity also. So by itself, it stimulates the alpha one. So basically, we are showing the hypersensitivity here. That even after decreasing noradrenaline with the chota sa amount, the pupil is responding. right this is your left horners you can see the constriction you can see the ptosis and what do you see in the second image it has become reversed so what drug do you think this patient has been given this is aproclonidin okay so after aproclonidin you can see the pupil has dilated the ptosis is gone so this is basically your aproclonidin testing for horners okay aproclonidin testing for horners so look at this image here pehle jo hum karte the cocaine test testing and amphetamine testing i'm just telling you the important point here cocaine we know has a sympathomimetic action we just now said right so it increases the noradrenaline so normal pupils they dilate with cocaine and also amphetamine horners could be pre ganglionic it could be post ganglionic what happens with cocaine is the pupil does not dilate we saw in the image the horners pupil does not dilate with cocaine but if you give amphetamine if it is pre ganglionic the both of the pupils dilate the post ganglionic if it is post ganglionic it does not dilate so just remember this point that cocaine diagnosis the horner syndrome that means no dilatation with cocaine it is horners but amphetamine test it helps localizing whether it's pre ganglionic or it's post ganglionic if it is pre ganglionic then both of the pupils would dilate if it is post ganglionic it would not dilate okay so remember that cocaine helps in diagnosis not the localization amphetamine helps in localization or even in the flow chart here we saw it is phenylephrine which helps in the uh, localization right if the affected pupil dilates it is post ganglionic if it does not dilate it is pre ganglionic so phenylephrine amphetamine help in the localization okay so now i am quickly running you through the points that we have learned basically for pupil abnormalities anisocoria that means difference in the size of the pupil how much more than 0.4 mm if it is greater in the dark that means the pupil is not dilating so which pupil is abnormal the constricted pupil so the abnormal pupil is the constricted pupil if it is greater in the light bright light bada pupil so abnormal pupil is the dilated pupil okay now in the dilated pupil we said that if it is abnormal shape it is iris damage if it is normal shape then you test first with diluted pilocarpin if it is hypersensitivity ad's the pupil constricts it is your denervation hypersensitivity ad's tonic pupil if there is no constriction you give pilocarpin strong if still it does not constrict it is persistent pharmacologic midriasis if it constricts it is third nerve palsy okay this is easy for dilated now look at the uh, this one if it is constricted pupil basically when the pupil is constricted you want to see whether it is horners so what test you do you do apraclonidin test 
Aproclonidin, what does it lead to aproclonidin? Aproclonidin causes reversal of horners. That means the affected constricted pupil becomes dilated. The affected abnormal pupil dilates, that is reversal, that diagnoses your horners. If it does not dilate, it is physiological anisocoria. That means which appears in the dark, right? Now, horners to differentiate whether it is preganglionic or it is postganglionic. We can use the drug that is amphetamine or we can use phenylephrine, right? If it is postganglionic, it is not going to respond. There would be no response. If it is preganglionic, it will dilate. There would be a response which is present. So to differentiate, you can use uh, amphetamine and phenylephrine. Now we use aproclonidin. Previously, we used cocaine, right? Cocaine used to be used for diagnosis of horners. Horners does not Con, uh, dilate with cocaine, right? With aproclonidin, it dilates. Okay? So, this is uh, about the pupil abnormalities that we have learned. Uh, let us quickly revise the kya kya pada. We learned about Ades pupil, Ergel Robertson pupil, the Wernicke's hemianopic pupil, the Pontine hemorrhage, right? The Hutchison's pupil, that is what we learned about. We learned about Horner's and the third nerve palsy. AD's pupil is a dilated pupil, unilateral dilated pupil. The dilated pupil is the abnormal pupil. There is light near dissociation, right? The light reflex is uh, absent but the near reflex is present. Similar happens in Argyll Robertson, but these are bilateral small irregular pupils seen with neurosyphilis. Wernicke's hemianopic, that lesion is in the optic tract. Pontine, pinpoint pupils, right? The pontine hemorrhage leads to pinpoint pupils. Hutchison's pupil is due to uncle herniation, the compression of the third nerve, you would see ipsilateral dilated pupil. Horner's sympathetic is gone. When the sympathetic is gone, the pupil would be constricted. So there would be meiosis, there would be ptosis, endophthalmus, enhydrosis, heterochromia in congenital. Horner's is diagnosed by aproclonidin test, right? It leads to reversal by aproclonidin. Third nerve palsy. Parasympathetic gone, so you would see dilated pupil, the eyeball, it would be down and out and there would be ptosis as well, right? And how about pharmacologic midriasis? Remember that pharmacologic midriasis basically is a persistent midriasis. Even with 1% pilocarpin, it does not respond. There is no light reflex. There is no accommodation reflex. There is nothing in pharmacologic midriasis. Okay. And the one thing that I forgot to mention about very, very important, RAPD. Right. Absolutely. The RAPD, relative afferent pupillary defect that is basically seen with partial optic nerve damage. Right before the optic chiasma, if there's a lesion, uh, then it leads to your RAPD. What is the test done? It is the swinging flash light test, which is done for RAPD defect. So, what happens in the swinging flash light test? So, when you are swinging the flashlight from one eye to the other, from one eye to the other, if this is the affected eye, the RAPD wala eye, so when you shine the torch in this eye, normally what happens, the pupil should constrict. But what happens here, the pupil dilates instead of constricting. Both the pupil basically dilate when you shine the light in the affected eye. And why the swinging flashlight? Because basically, you are creating the fatigue in that eye. If the optic nerve is partially damaged, that eye will be fatigued, uh, you know, earlier as compared to the normal eye. So, that eye will show the dilatation and it will not show the constriction because now it is fatigued. So, you will not see the constriction, but you would see the dilatation, okay? That is why it is... Uh, 
that is why it is your uh, RAPD here. Why the non-affected eye is dilating? Because you are removing the light from here. Aapne yaan pe torch kiya tha, the pupil had constricted. So basically the pupil is coming to the normal size when you remove the light. So that is like dilatation. Okay, that is what the dilatation is happening. Theek hai? So ideally both the eyes are dilating because you are removing the light. Yaan pe consensual wala. Because in the affected eye, the constriction is not happening. The dilatation is predominating over the constriction. Okay? So, basically, the affected eye will get fatigued. There would be dilatation in response to the light. Remember, it is the swinging flashlight test. Okay, it is the swinging flashlight test. And another point to be remembered, do you see a nisocoria in RAPD? No. Remember that the afferent lesions, right, if this is your optic nerve, which is the afferent, the afferent lesions generally have no anisocoria. The efferent lesions are the one which show anisocoria, okay? So remember this point, afferent lesions, no anisocoria. Efferent lesions are the ones which show the anisocoria, right? Like your ADs, horners, third nerve palsy, these are efferent ke problem. These show a nisocoria. Okay. Is this a clear with everyone? So that was about the quick review of the pupil abnormalities. As I said, make these notes, go back to your primary notes, revise them and solve the MCQs. Okay. And solve the MCQs um, so that you get a confidence in this topic. All right. So thank you so much everyone for joining for this one. We are uh, meeting again uh, next at uh, 5 p.m. Right. For the fast 5 KBMD, but on the app. Uh, uh, KBMD Scon Banega MD live quiz to help you develop the MCQ solving skills. Okay. Thank you and goodbye. Take care. Keep studying, keep revising, and keep winning.